Recently I've seen many articles and videos that rank every doctor according to someone's opinions. That's never satisfied me, it all seems very subjective. Today I'm going to be doing something different. Today I'm going to be ranking every doctor who appeared on British TV using science. And by science, I mean I'm going to be using evidence in the form of numbers that you can verify yourself. I'll explain my method as I go. Let's jump in. Who's the most popular doctor? Can there ever be a definitive answer to that question? Well, there is an answer. It's Tom Baker, the fourth doctor, the guy with the scarf and the robotic dog. But why him? What makes him the most popular doctor of all time? What evidence do I have? You'll see there's a popularity percentage I've displayed here. That percentage is the average popularity of every episode that Doctor appeared in. The popularity of an episode is the percentage of the UK population at the time who watched that episode on TV. Let me explain. I'm using the UK viewership numbers, which can be found on Wikipedia, which has viewing figures for every episode of the original show and the 2005 revival. I've also looked at DoctorWhoTV.co.uk, which breaks down the numbers in more detail, particularly from 2005 onwards. I've copied the viewership numbers into a spreadsheet. However, we can't just graph the viewership numbers because the UK's population has grown over time. We'd be comparing numbers from the 1960s with numbers from the 2020s, yet surely there'd be more potential viewers now because the population has grown. So I've divided each episode's UK viewers by the UK population at the time the episode was first screened. These population estimates are available from Wikipedia. Dividing viewership by population produces, for each episode, a percentage of the UK population who watched that episode on British TV. Let's call this the episode's popularity percentage. Next, for each doctor, I've computed the average popularity percentage of every episode in which that doctor appeared. Let's call this the doctor's popularity score. So when you see the score for Tom Baker, that's the average popularity of every episode he's appeared in on British TV. That score is an all-inclusive percentage, so actually also includes any specials, basically whenever he was in character playing the doctor. Note, I've included Tom Baker's appearance in The Five Doctors, although I've had to exclude the story Sharda, which is where the footage for his appearance in The Five Doctors originated, since Sharda was never completed or televised. So The Five Doctors featured the first televised appearances of that footage. I've also included Tom Baker's appearance in the 50th anniversary special, which also featured several other Doctors. The next most popular Doctor is John Hurt's War Doctor, the main story John Hurt appeared in was entitled The Day of the Doctor, which was the movie-length 50th anniversary special, but he also appeared at the end of the story just before it, The Name of the Doctor. Even though it was only a brief appearance, I've included it in the all-inclusive percentage. So there's two ways we could compute John Hurt's score. We could solely use the 50th special, which would produce a very high percentage, or we could average his two appearances on TV, producing a lower, more balanced number by averaging both stories. For reasons of avoiding subjective decisions on what to include or exclude, I've used that second all-inclusive method for all Doctors. John Hurt also appeared in a web mini-episode called The Night of the Doctor, which I haven't included. I'll explain why that web episode hasn't been included later. But first, the next most popular is the first Doctor, played by William Hartnell. There's a reason we're still talking about this show 60 years later, and William Hartnell is a big part of that story. He not only introduced us to the character of the enigmatic, capricious, and wise time traveller, but his doctor repeatedly battled against his most recognisable enemies, the Daleks. You'll see for William Hartnell, his score is quite high, and it's notable this was in an era in the 60s when not every British household had a TV. The score is the average of his Doctor's main run of shows. In Hartnell's case, this was the first 134 episodes up until the end of the 10th planet. But since we're looking for the all-inclusive score, we also include the 10th anniversary special, The Three Doctors, in which he appeared alongside the second and third Doctors. By the way, I've graphed both the main run average and the all-inclusive average for each Doctor, and in most cases there's very little difference. The all-inclusive score tends to be slightly higher than, than the main run, because specials tend to have higher viewership numbers than the main series. I'll talk more about this later. 
The next most popular Doctor is the Eighth Doctor, Paul McGann. Paul McGann played the Eighth Doctor in a one-off movie-length story from 1996. The show attracted good viewership numbers. But for whatever reason, a TV series following on from that movie didn't occur. Thus, even though he's since recorded many audio adventures, Paul McGann remains the only Doctor to appear in a single televised appearance. Accordingly, his popularity score is simply the percentage of Brits who watched his movie on the night. And because it was a movie event, those numbers are very good, better than usual TV episodes. This effect, where movies and specials do better than the TV episodes of a full season run, tend to occur in all eras of the show. The Christmas specials, for instance, consistently outperform even the season finales of the TV show. By the way, Paul McGann also appeared in a web mini-episode called The Night of the Doctor. I haven't been able to include this in the calculations because firstly, it wasn't initially screened on TV, it was released on the internet, and secondly, I don't have any TV viewership numbers for it. Since that story falls outside the defined boundaries of this ranking assessment, I just can't include it. For the same reason, I'm sorry, but I have no way to rank Peter Cushing here, since he played Doctor Who in two movies in the 1960s, but they were released in cinemas, so I don't have any TV viewership numbers for them. The next most popular Doctor, played by John Pertwee, was the third Doctor. With a charismatic and charming persona, he had a fatherly fondness for his companions, such as Joe Grant and Sarah Jane Smith. His time spent in exile on Earth, working with the Brigadier and the unit team, meant the show's threats hit home to the British audience. And this was a time of transition to colour television, so their special effects and costumes were brighter and captured people's imaginations. The Doctor's nemesis, the Master, was also introduced in this era. Pertwee's five seasons increased in popularity as he made the role his own. For his ranking, I've included his appearance in the 20th anniversary special, The Five Doctors. The next most popular Doctor is... Rowan Atkinson. Wait, what? Why is Mr. Bean here? Well, Rowan Atkinson appeared in a comic relief special in 1999 called The Curse of Fatal Death. With his companion Julius Waller, the spoof also featured the Master and the Daleks. Towards the end, his Doctor regenerates into a number of other Doctors, played by Richard E. Grant, Jim Broadbent, Hugh Grant, and Joanna Lumley. Is it fair to include this here, since it was a comedy special screened on a single night? Well, I've included it just for completeness, but I'm not going to give these Doctors a ranking. The next most popular Doctor is Peter Davison, the fifth Doctor. Peter Davison's era was well-loved by the public. He was the youngest actor to play the Doctor at the time, and his three younger companions brought a new dynamic to the show. After the five Doctors, he decided to leave the show towards the end of his third season in the role. Note, I've included his performance as the fifth Doctor from Time Crash, a crossover with the tenth Doctor, screened in 2007. The next most popular Doctor is David Tennant, the tenth Doctor. It might surprise people, as it certainly surprised me, that David Tennant's Doctor is so far down the list. In general, it seems that New Who sits towards the second half of this list. Everyone seems to underestimate how popular the original show was in the 1960s, 70s and 80s. I've included all of Tennant's televised performances as the Doctor so far, for which I have viewership numbers, including the 2005 Children in Need special informally titled Born Again, every special he's appeared in, as well as Time Crash and The Day of the Doctor. I haven't included the spin-off episode The Wedding of Sarah Jane because I don't have viewership numbers for it, nor the animated adventures The Infinite Quest or Dreamland for the same reason. Technically, there are three different versions of the Tenth Doctor who David Tennant plays, but I'm combining them all together here. The next most popular Doctor is Richard Herndl, playing the First Doctor. Richard Herndl only appeared in a single story, The Five Doctors Special. I've included his performance separately, rather than conflating it with William Hartnell's performances. So even though we're talking about Doctors, we are of course really talking about actors playing the Doctor. The next most popular Doctor is... Christopher Eccleston, the ninth Doctor. He only appeared in the 2005 season, which revived the show and was a critical success. I haven't included the clip of him which appears in the Day of the Doctor because it was previously televised footage. That's also true for most of the other clips of other Doctors seen in that story. The next most popular Doctor is Patrick Troughton, the second Doctor. I've included not only his main run, but also his appearances in The Three Doctors, The Five Doctors and The Two Doctors. The next most popular Doctor is Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor. 
I've included the 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, where he was the main Doctor, but also all Christmas specials he's appeared in, and the canonical mini-episodes Space and Time, and the Sarah Jane spin-off episodes for The Death of the Doctor, and the first episode of his successor, Peter Capaldi, because Matt Smith filmed an extra scene for that story. It might be a little unfair to include the Sarah Jane episodes for Matt Smith, but not the ones in which David Tennant appeared, but it's simply due to the viewership numbers available. The next most popular Doctor is Colin Baker, the sixth Doctor. I've included his performances at the end of Peter Davison's final story, The Caves of Androzani. In general, if an incoming Doctor filmed a regeneration scene as part of the previous Doctor's final episode, I've included it in the all-inclusive percentage. Colin Baker's first full series was more popular than his final series, The Trial of Time Lord, so his average reflects that disparity, placing him further towards the end of this ranking than his predecessors. The next most popular Doctor is Peter Capaldi, the 12th Doctor. I've included his performances in all the specials he's appeared in, including The Day of the Doctor. Yes, it was only his eyebrows, but it was still new footage filmed explicitly for that story. I also include his post-regeneration scene in The Time of the Doctor, up until his latest appearance in Twice Upon a Time. I haven't included his appearance in Class, the spin-off show, since the numbers I have for it are, I believe, only for the online distribution, which I think happened before any televised appearance of the show. The next most popular Doctor is David Bradley, playing the first Doctor. He appeared in two stories, The Doctor Falls and Twice Upon a Time, Like Richard Herndl, he played the first Doctor, but I'm separating out his performances from both Herndl's and Hartnell's. The next most popular Doctor is Jodie Whittaker, the 13th Doctor. Whittaker's era was marked by changes in format and writing, which resulted in falling ratings over the course of her three seasons. Her average, like Colin Baker's, reflects that reality. I've included her appearance at the end of Capaldi's final story and all televised specials she's appeared in so far. Note, the viewership numbers I've used for Whittaker are the plus four screen numbers from DoctorWhoTV.co.uk, which include not only the overnight figures but also the downloads and repeats for some days after the original screening. Basically, I've tried to use the most generous numbers I could find, rather than only restricting the statistics to using overnights for all Doctors. There can be arguments about whether that's reasonable, but my philosophy is to include all first views of a TV broadcast, even if that involves some time shifting for modern audiences using the BBC iPlayer streaming service in the days following the original broadcast. The next most popular Doctor is Sylvester McCoy, the seventh Doctor. He was the Doctor during a time at the BBC when the show's time slot was changed and the budget cut before it was finally cancelled. I've averaged all his appearances so far as the character, including his regeneration scenes in Paul McGann's movie. His main run only uses overnight numbers, because that was all that was available prior to the 2000s. I haven't included his portrayal of himself in the Five-ish Doctor's reboot, since he's not playing the character of the Doctor in that comedy. The same is true of Peter Davison and the other Doctors who appeared in that story. But wait, we're not done yet. The next most popular Doctor is... Michael Jaston, the Valyard. Who is the Valyard? Yes, precisely. Who is the Valyard? Specifically, the Valyard was some kind of future incarnation of the Doctor. But does he belong in this list if he wasn't really playing the Doctor? (sighs) That's difficult to answer, because it depends on whether we define the Doctor by name, by personality, or by continuity of being. Regeneration means there's some continuity of the person of the Doctor, even if the personality changes a bit each time. And notably, unlike other actors such as John Hurt, Paul McGann, Richard Herndl or David Bradley, the Valyard character played by Michael Jaston did appear in a full season of the show, season 23, The Trial of a Time Lord. So he has at least that claim to his name. If we exclude him, we should probably exclude those others and possibly the next names on this ranking list too. The next most popular Doctor is Joe Martin, the Fugitive Doctor. Joe Martin played a version of the Doctor in Jodie Whittaker's second and third seasons, although it was unclear where in the Doctor's timeline that character fits. She never appeared in a whole season of the show, only in occasional episodes. Since the ratings were already falling by the time she appeared, her average is quite low, but she's still not the final entry in this ranking list. The title of least popular Doctor thus far goes to The Timeless Children. 
These characters were shown in flashback in one episode of Whittaker's era. It was suggested there were previous incarnations of the Doctor from a time before the Doctor was known as the Doctor. Because they were only filmed for that one episode, that episode's viewership numbers produced this popularity score, which is the lowest on the list. Do they count as incarnations of the Doctor when the Doctor doesn't remember them and they don't know the Doctor? It's debatable. But that's how this ranking list stands at this present time. Here's a graph of all the popularity scores I've discussed. Each Doctor has two lines. The blue line is the main run for that Doctor whereas the orange line is the all-inclusive scores, which includes all regeneration sequences, specials, and other televised appearances of that character. You can see in most cases the all-inclusive score is a little higher, but the overall shape of the graph is the same. In two cases, the main run line is higher, but those are exceptional cases where the actor was mostly in a movie-length special that rated more highly than the TV show episodes immediately prior. Sorting the list chronologically, we can draw some parallels between the earliest and latest eras of the show. Both had a guest actor playing the first Doctor in a special. Both display popularity above 10% initially, then declining popularity later on. Both had special event seasons, which featured a secret version of the Doctor. As the Twelfth Doctor might say, history rhymes. My goal has been to show the numbers, to explain where they came from, and to allow you to reproduce what I did yourselves. Does this answer the question of who is the best Doctor? Of course not. They each have their own merits, and the actors aren't solely responsible for the quality of the show's writing or production. Good storytelling doesn't just come down to the viewership numbers or percentages, but if there's to be a discussion of viewership numbers, I think I've demonstrated that the show waxes and wanes, and some eras are more watched than others.